Hey guys, and welcome to a quick tutorial on Open Broadcaster Software, which is a free open source software for live streaming and recording videos to your computer from games, from your desktop. Uh, you can record anything that your screen sees. So, so it's kind of cool. It's like it's free and it's awesome and it works. And file sizes are actually fucking awesome because it saves straight to MP4 or FLV, which are very small sizes, not AVI or anything like that, which is crazy sometimes to upload or or things if you don't have a video editor um, so basically all you have to do is go to the website um, you'll be you'll see it's linked in the description you'll be clicking this button here it's only for Windows unfortunately there is a Mac thing for the OBS multi-platform but I'm not sure how that works and I think it's a different type of application which is in very like alpha stages or something I believe so yeah we'll click this you'll download it and I'll see you in a second so after installing OBS, you'll get a screen that looks much similar to like this, and it can look quite daunting if you don't know what you're doing. Heck, I had to learn this myself just a few days ago. Actually, it was like two days ago or three days ago. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, bear with me. Um, you can see there's like some crazy stuff now um, that I'm recording my monitor with. Uh, I'll show you how to do this in a second. It looks kind of cool actually with like all the like little like lagged displays in each other. It's like Inception recording. So basically. Um, to do uh, things in this, all you have to do is go to settings first. You're gonna want to deal with a lot of stuff here. It's crazy. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even joking. There is so much crap in here that you need to look at. So first, in general, you have your languages. And languages, um, obviously, you can understand what you gotta do there. It's just your languages stuff. Um, here. There's nothing you need to worry about too much here unless you want uh, things to launch on the opening. The notification area, I'm actually not sure what this does uh, as of yet, so it doesn't really play a big important role to me. Um, we're going to go into encoding, and here you're going to need to change something very drastic if you're recording to um, your computer's files and stuff, or if you're streaming, then you keep it at a low, a low rate. But if you're streaming, you can search for another tutorial because I don't stream or anything. So if you want to save it to your desktop, um, I recommend using around 10 thousand or more um, the higher this number is the better it is for your videos but it also make your video size a lot bigger as well so keep that in mind um, if you make it anything lower it does end up getting pixelated and turning into squares uh, most of my videos get rendered at I think it's uh, 6,000 or something so so recording in 10,000 is good for me so I can keep it higher value for when I when I put my videos up online so so yeah you're also gonna probably want to change your audio encoding just to get some better audio the higher the number the better the audio I just I just put it at 256 because the 320 looks scary <laughs> I don't want to mess around with too high settings so yeah Everything should look pretty much like this if you're recording. Um, your broadcast settings need to be changed from live stream to file output only. And here, you'll need to change your file path by clicking browse, and then you click over here, for example, boom, and then you can copy that link, or you'd have to go to your thing like here. You'd go to your, your something drive, and then copy the things over here, the E drive or whatnot, copy that pastes here like e colon slash and then and then here what this is here is the what the video will be called it's video dash and then that that dollar sign t you'll see if i hold my mouse over here for quite a while it puts up all these different things on the left it's like the code there and then it tells you what it does so it, it will add to the name what the full time of the the video what it was made at the time and stuff the year the month the day the time and the time obviously so so yeah and then you just put dot mp4 or flv i prefer using mp4s because it just works better for me uh replay buffer is a really cool thing it's where you can um basically you can let this thing buffer constantly like it's recording but it's not saving the file so you're not saving like hundreds of footage of files if you're playing like the long game where there's going to be lots of recording and you don't want you have like limited space in your hard drive or something um you can set this to a certain amount of seconds and then when you click a certain button it will save the last 45 seconds of of the recording the buffer so if I play a game and something cool happens, I would click that button right after the cool thing happens, and it will save just that moment, that those those last 45 seconds of from when I hit the button. So it's kind of cool to save like the replay of what just happened if if you're like into that stuff. So I plan on using it. It's going to be quite cool because I don't want to record hundreds of footage all the time. <laughs> so yeah, and basically you do the same thing with your file path on the above one. Uh, you can just set it like that. I just I just made it replay dash the time and then dot mp4 as well. So that works pretty good. Then we're going to head over to video. We're going to want to apply our changes because I did change from file output only to file output only, um, which makes no sense. 
sense to it. Uh, resolution downscale, I made it none because I'm just using my own resolution, the 1920 by 1080 which which has always worked for me and it's what my resolution is. Um, you can choose your video adapter, I only have one uh, graphics card in my computer. Uh, base resolution, I just kept mine on the custom win one which is uh, my resolution in any case. Um, this arrow thing, um, it tells you to disable it if you're on Windows 7 or Vista but but um, mine doesn't lag when, when it is on, so it doesn't bother me. It's supposedly, it's supposed to lag your computer and make the FPS drop, but it doesn't do it to me, so I'm going to leave it as is. So yeah, um, you can just decide what you want to do with there. Audio, uh, you have your, your default um, sound where it comes out, uh, like your speakers, for example. Um, your microphone here, you can choose your device. You can even have your default. If you have more than one microphone and you wanted to use the better one, you better know what your microphone's called and then just click it like that, kabam, and then it will use that. And then this is, that's fine, that's fine. You don't need any of these settings if you want to go into like serious talking stuff. Hotkeys, um, hotkeys, um, these are buttons you use to, to start recording or stop recording or start the replay buffer or stop the replay buffer or save the replay buffer kind of things. I've only used those really. I don't use a stream, so I don't need that. Uh, to start the recording, that will just basically do what you can see in the background there. It's doing, it's like, it's actually recording my screen, my monitor here right now. So you're getting this like weird kind of effect going on in the background because it's recording exactly what you're seeing here. Um, so yeah, basically I made that F9 because for general, a lot of the recording applications use F9 to, to start recording. And then when you click F9 again, it will stop recording. So that works pretty good. Um, Start replay buffer. Um, the replay buffer won't work unless you start it. So you got to keep it going because it will it will kind of like record footage for 45 seconds at a time, and every time like something 46 seconds ago will get deleted. So it's not saving up uh, like huge amounts of space. And I don't think it's actually saving. I think it's just going through a saving like on your RAM or graphics card or something like that. So so you should be good there if if that going. So if you want to do the replay thing, if like you're playing a game but you don't want to record the whole thing, you just start the replay buffer. For me, I just put it on my number pad the star I click star it will look like it's recording uh, but it's not recording so you'll see on the on the thing later on yeah, and then you got to stop this when you're done so I just made that minus and if something cool happens and you want to save that replay the last 45 seconds the, the magic button is the plus sign on my numpad um, so yeah you just click these you just click there and then click the button on the keyboard that you want to use and then voila and you can also clear it if you don't want it on on your computer anymore so so yeah that's that's pretty much how that works if you want to use to push to talk you should um, play around with that um, if you don't know what that is uh, so advanced advanced you're not going to be really using anything here other than uh, encoding profile i just made mine from main to high because i just wanted to encode a lot better and stuff like that so just works better for me quick sync is well, I don't know what it is, but it's something there. Browser, don't know what that is. Um, microphone noise gate, this basically just kind of like changes when your microphone records. So if it's below the, the line on the left here, it won't record the microphone. And if it's um, above the one on the right, it will record the microphone and you'll hear everything the microphone says kind of thing. So, so yeah, you just play around with that. You just leave the, the right one a little higher than the left one and the left one above the noise thing. So if you like, listen, look here, I'll just stop talking like that. So you leave it above that green at the silence and then that one just a little bit above that one. And yeah, scene switcher, don't know what that does, but it's fine. So click OK. We go back to the screen here and you're probably wondering, how do we record? Like, you'll see there's these scenes and sources and you'll try preview stream and stuff and nothing will happen. It's really confusing sometimes, so so don't worry. It, it does it does have a simple way of working, actually, um, once you understand it. So for scenes, if you don't want to have here, you just right click, you go add scene. Um, you can call it whatever you want. And as you can see, so yeah, and once you call it whatever you want, you will get the option to just have that scene here. Basically, it gives it a name and, a, and an area to use right over there. And then you can go over to your sources. You're gonna, you can right click, add, and then choose which one you want to use. Window capture will obviously capture Windows. Monitor capture will capture the monitor. Uh, though be careful with that one because that one, uh, if, if you have a game that's playing in full screen, it won't record that. So, so yeah, if you want to capture a game, you click game capture which you can see motion capture, I'll go to properties and you can you can see on monitor capture uh, it will choose the monitors. I have two monitors so it will just ask me which monitor I want to use. You can obviously try this out to see which monitor is the right one. You can turn on your 
if your thing records your cursor or not, which is helpful if you're doing things like montages and you, you don't want like some mouse cursor in the middle of the screen, <laughs> which can look kind of silly sometimes. So yeah, it, it has all these different uh, ways of working. Um, for, for the gaming one, I'm going to have to show you some screenshots. Um, I'll show you in a little bit because uh, it's not going to record the monitor like this and I'm too lazy to get my other application to record this one's application. So it's kind of like the like, weird magic jutsu shit going on. So let me, let me just show you in the background there. You can you kind of get the gist from there. You'll see that you can choose from the, the list of what applications are currently running and you can choose which one it must record. Keep in mind, like some games go from one state to another. Uh, for example, League of Legends will have the launcher. You don't want to record the launcher. <laughs> you want to open the game first and just as your game's starting, and like you can see like the pings and the loading screens and all the stuff and the game, as soon as the game's full screen, then you go to your thing and select the, the game in the, in the source list. And then you can click record and record the gameplay. Obviously, you'll see if the game is recording because it will show on, on this thing right over here in front of you. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helped.